In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the algebra topics of evaluating expressions and then writing expressions. So on the ACT, you may be asked to evaluate an expression. And when you have that, what we want to be able to do is look for any given values in the questions that we can substitute in for variables and then be able to solve the equation. So let's take a look at this example. If t equals to 5 and u equals to 1, what is the value of v for 3v plus 2t equals 3 minus 5u? So we're given this algebraic equation with three different variables, v, u, and t. And it tells us at the very beginning of the question that we're going to plug in t equals 5 and u equals 1 and we want to know what the value of v is. So one way you can solve this problem is you can begin by solving for v because that's what we're going to be looking for what the value is. So we get the expression, we move the 2t over to the right hand side by subtracting it and then we need to divide through by 3 so that we just have v. Then we're going to plug in the values for t and u that we were given in the question itself. And when we do that, we evaluate and we find that v is equal to a negative 4. So there are a couple of other ways that you can solve it. This is just one example. So you can maybe discuss the other ways that you may solve a question like this. But one thing I want us to think about is how now can you check this question by using the answer. When we check a question, one strategy you may want to think about is to check your question using a different technique from the way you originally worked the problem. If when you originally work the problem, let's say you just make a careless error, how many times have you found yourself going back over and not catching that careless error? If we use a different technique, we're more likely to find that mistake. So think about how are some different ways you could work this problem to check it in a different way. One thing you may have come up with, we found the value to be negative 4. What if we plugged in, we go back to the original question, we can plug in negative 4 for v, and maybe just one of the given values, either t to be 5 or u to be 1, only one of them, plug in that value for v, let's say we'll plug in a value for t, and we make sure we get a value of u equals 1 when we do that. That also brings us to another thing we can try. Instead of working the problem from solving for v, plugging in, remember you can always use your answer choices. One of those five choices is the answer for v. It may take a little bit longer, but you could plug in the values for v in the answer choices and one of the given values and then confirm that you when you get the other value. So try these different techniques in your prep period to see what methods work best for you. There are a couple of other types of questions that we see in this area. Sometimes you may be asked to solve for a particular variable and this is kind of how we worked the previous question. We solved for v and then we plugged in. This example asks us if the equation for kinetic energy K is given by K equals 1 half mv squared, solve the equation for mass m. On a lot of these type of questions, also notice that sometimes they will pull from our science world for formulas or equations, and you don't have to worry, you don't have to really have you don't have to have any concept of what kinetic energy is to solve this particular question. We are just given an equation and it's solved in terms of one variable and we want to solve maybe in terms of another. So in this case we're set up as k equals. We want to set it up as m equals. So what we'll need to do is we want to move the 1 half and the v squared over to the left hand side so that we just have m. So when, to get rid of the 1 half we'll multiply by 2 on both sides and then to get rid of the v squared since it's showing multiplication we'll divide through by v squared. So we end up with m equals to 2k divided by v squared. So we're just solving for a different variable. So you may also have some questions that have some special operation characters. And we have this example here where we're using this smiley face as a particular character. You may not actually see something like this, an emoji, but you never know. Sometimes they just use different symbols. 
and it gives some kind of definition. It says if TV, smiley face, MN is equal to TN plus VM. So that's our definition. It's set up there. Then they want to know what 3-5 special operation 1-2 is. We're going to match up our variables from our definition with the actual values that they're wanting us to evaluate. So in this case, 3 is the same as T, 5 is the same as V, 1 is the same as M, and 2 is equal to N. So we're going to plug those values in to the right-hand side of our definition statement. And when we match all those numbers up with the variables and we plug in, we get that the answer is 11. So don't let it confuse you when you're, you think you're not for sure what these characters mean. Look at how they have defined the use of the special operation. Now let's think about writing expressions. One of the earliest things you do in algebra is you learn how to convert words into an algebraic expression. These are usually our word problems, of course, because we're wanting to take those words and build an equation or an expression. So first of all, let's think about some of our main key words when we're looking at this. A lot of times you'll see sum. You know that means addition, difference is subtraction, Product is multiplication. So it's these words you've been using. Just make sure you remember the operations that they refer to. So let's take a look at this example. If we were asked to take the words here, three more than twice a number, how would you write that as an algebraic expression? Three more than twice a number. We could set up 3 plus 2x. x is our variable. It is the number. You could have used any variable there. We just chose x. 3 more than twice that. 3 plus 2x. Let's take a look at another one. 8 less than 3 times the difference between a number and 1 is 7. So this is an equation. The reason I know it's an equation, I have is in these words. Is should equal is an equal sign. We think equal. So first of all, let's go back to our first words. 8 less than, so we're going to be subtracting 8 from something. What are we subtracting it from? 3 times the difference between a number and 1. What is the difference between a number and 1? Difference is subtraction. So we're going to subtract a number that is a variable. So we'll just use x. It really doesn't matter, but it, it will be dependent on how, what variable is used in the answer choices. So if we say our number is x, we would have x minus 1, 3 times that, and subtract 8 from that. That is equal to 7. So that equates to 3 times x minus 1, 3 times the difference, less 8, minus 8 is 7, equals 7. Practice using these kind of substitutions for values and in converting our words to expressions and equations. One of the applications that we have a lot of questions on on the ACT that deal with converting these words to expressions are questions that are, are the rate questions, where usually you have a fixed value and a variable. There are different kind of real world examples for this. For example, when you rent a car, there is usually a fixed fee for the day, and then a variable cost dependent on how many miles you drive that day. So no matter what, you're gonna pay the fixed fee and the variable, which could be a various amount from person to person, is dependent on the number of miles you drive. Sometimes a telephone bill may be like this. No matter what, you pay a fixed amount, and then for however many calls or minutes or something like that, you're charged a certain rate. So we have to take how the relationship is defined in the words and create an expression or an equation for that. So let's take a look at this example. Julia sells cookies at a concession stand. She bought a bowl and mixer to begin her operations for $30. So that is her fixed cost. No matter what, she's got a $30 
cost. Now it also costs her 30 cents a cookie for ingredients. What expression represents her profit P if she sells each cookie C for $2? We're looking for profit, an overall profit. We know that she sells a cookie for $2. That's what she begins with, but we have to subtract out her cost. That's how a business works, right? So no matter what, she has a $30 upfront cost and then 30 cents per cookie. Our variable in this case is C, cookies, how many she sells. When we look at this expression for P, she's going to make $2 per cookie. That's where we get the 2C. From that, we have to subtract off and we put it in parentheses because in parentheses, that is our total cost. We have the $30 plus 30 cents, 0.3, times C. For every cookie she sells, it's gonna cost her 30 cents. We can simplify this expression, get all of our C's together. We have to distribute the negative sign through the 30 plus 0.3 C and we get 2C minus 30 minus 0.3C, and then combine the Cs, 1.7C minus 30. That is her profit. So we've taken the words from the question, and we've been able to put that numerically as an algebraic expression. Here's another ACT type example that you can try out. Pause the video here, work the problem, and we'll come back and look at it. It says for all real numbers x and y, such that the product of y and 4 is x, which of the following expressions represents the sum of y and 4 in terms of x? So this is a multi-step problem, and we're just going to take it a little bit as we can. I like to start here. Let's look in our for statement. It says for all real numbers x and y, so we're talking about two different variables, x and y, we know the product product should signify multiplication. The product of y and 4, so that's 4y, is, means equal, x. So we can already write this first expression here, this first equation, 4y equals x. But our question says, which of the following expressions represents the sum of y and 4 in terms of x? Now, if we glance at our answer choices, you'll notice that x is the only variable in there. And that's what it means when we want to solve in terms of x. We want x, normally what we think of on the right-hand side, and y on the left-hand side. Well, we know that 4y equals x, but we also want to know about the sum, that should tell you addition, of y and 4. So that gives us y plus 4. So now we have these two equations. We have an equation and an expression. We can take our equation 4y equals x and let's solve for y. And we get that y equals x divided by 4. Now we're going to substitute in x over 4, what we just found in the previous step, for y in our sum of y plus 4. So we get x over 4 plus 4. And as we're working this, we glance over at our answer choices, and we see that that is answer choice B. X over 4 plus 4 gives us this new expression in terms of X.